Hi and welcome to 2023. I wanted to take the opportunity to sit down and talk about why 2022 was a tough year for me. I didn't talk about this a huge amount up until now because I like to have some privacy between like my life and what I'm sharing on the internet and also and mostly because I don't really like to talk about things until I've processed them and almost kind of come out the other side or at least I'm starting to climb back out of the hole and feeling more positive and ready to talk about how things are going to be better because if I just come on here and I'm like everything's terrible and I can't cope I feel like that's just kind of depressing and not really very productive. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to talk about everything that went on last year and why it was really hard and like what I've learned from it and what I'm going to be doing moving forward in 2023. So one of the big underlying stresses of last year, I guess, is that I am going through the menopause. I'm 44 years old and this is quite a common age to start experiencing perimenopausal symptoms at the very least and this can be quite difficult to cope with and quite disruptive particularly if you are neurodivergent. So where I'm at right now is that my periods are definitely like much much further apart and so I feel like it might be that I will go through the full menopause quite soon which is like I'm at the younger end for that um, being only 44 but uh, that seems to be what's happening and I've also had some blood tests done last year that showed that I am in menopause according to the hormonal markers on my blood tests. So I started experiencing perimenopausal symptoms probably in my late 30s but last year everything just ramped up loads and I was experiencing and have been experiencing and am experiencing symptoms like uh, hot flushes which like when I heard about them didn't sound that bad you get a bit hot and then it goes away but actually in my experience it's quite it's more than that the hot flush is a really really intense feeling of getting really hot but I also experience anxiety during the hot flush and before I knew what the hot flushes were and how to cope with them sometimes that would turn into a panic attack I've now learned that if I take steps to cool myself down, take off some clothes, maybe even go outside, I can reduce the hot flush and get the anxiety kind of dampened down quite quickly. But before I knew this, I was basically having hot flushes turning, in, turning into panic attacks like a lot of the time, like nearly every night for some months of last year. And that was really difficult because I would know, for some reason they're worse at night, and I would know as the evening drew on that it might happen and that I might have panic attacks which made me feel anxious which meant that like I could never feel like oh I finished my working day and now I can relax because I was like and now I have to go through all that stuff. They also happen in the night and that would have me waking up feeling disoriented and panicky um, which was also like meaning that I'm getting less sleep which obviously makes me feel more stressed and overwhelmed and in addition for some reason and I don't really know the science behind why just being in the menopause can cause people to wake up in the middle of the night or wake up really early both of which have been happening to me I'll quite often wake up between four and five o'clock in the morning like wide awake and I'm someone who actually needs quite a lot of sleep so and sleep deprivation is just the worst you just can't be rational and you just feel like stressed a lot of the time so hot flushes sleep disturbances and my emotional dysregulation has gotten a lot worse around menopausal symptoms as well and I think this is scientifically because oestrogen is linked to the production of dopamine in your brain so when oestrogen drops which it does when you're menopausal then the dopamine drops and so my ADHD stuff like my emotional dysregulation and my difficulties with focus all became more intense and my sensory issues around the hot flushes and the changing sensations in my body all became more intense in a similar way that they might for a teenager when they're going through puberty an autistic teenager so like overall the menopause has been a lot to deal with additionally I did try going on HRT in about late September early October and whilst the estrogen side of HRT really agreed with me and did make me feel quite a lot better the days that I had to take progesterone, so you take oestrogen and you take progesterone, you take oestrogen all the time and then progesterone for 14 days a month and you have to take the progesterone to reduce some of the risks associated with 
taking estrogen or when I took the progesterone my anxiety went through the roof like multiple panic attacks a day so I had to come off of it all because of that so now I'm not on HRT so yeah long story to say that stuff was a lot and is a lot to deal with and is something that I'm dealing with just like kind of on a daily basis another thing that happened last year that I didn't actually talk about publicly was that I ended up getting COVID for the first time in June I think it was June I got it around the time that I went to Bristol Pride it was just after that and whilst I was only like mildly by COVID standards unwell for maybe two weeks so I was like you know like the flu unwell but not like dangerously unwell didn't need medical attention it didn't get better completely after I had COVID so I'm still feeling fatigue some what are we now six months later I'm still experiencing extra fatigue and I also for about four or five months experienced drops in my blood pressure drops in my heart rate and uh, symptoms that made it really difficult for me to function to the point that in September and October I had four visits to A&E because I was having chest pain and my blood pressure was dropping and I was feeling like I was going to pass out and I would ring 111 which is like the English number that you ring when you're not quite sure it's not definitely an emergency I don't want to just go to A&E and waste their time but the doctors are closed because it was like in the evening that this was happening and they always told me to go to A&E so I would go to A&E as people in the UK know right now A&E is chaotic you're there for a really long time before you're seen by a doctor um, so I'd be in A&E for like eight or nine hours usually overnight because it would happen in, in the evening and they couldn't find a cause. I had a CT scan of my heart and my lungs because I've got EDS and they wanted to make sure everything was okay there and the good thing about having that scan was that it showed that like my lungs, my heart, all of that stuff is all good which is reassuring from a health anxiety point of view. Um, but they couldn't figure out why my blood pressure was dropping. So yeah, I went like three or four times between September and October and then that side of things started improving somewhat, but I'm still struggling. So I don't know whether I have long COVID or not. I have seen my GP. My GP ran a very basic test for POTS to check that I don't have that and told me that I don't have that. She did a 24 hour ECG and that came back clear. Um, so essentially we don't really know what was causing those symptoms but touch wood it hasn't really happened for a couple of months now but like living in a state where I wasn't sure when I was going to become really unwell was quite stressful whilst trying to work and you know live my normal life um I guess I'll probably go back to the GP at some point in the next couple of months if I don't see the post-covid symptoms improving but I would say that they have improved a little bit since I had covid so I guess I'm trying to be optimistic that that I'm slowly going to get better from that because on top of the physical disability that I already have it became like I can't work properly or like basically because I'm really dedicated to my work I like ditched my social life and everything else in order to be able to work which was quite stressful and then I also have been experiencing what I've like looked up on the internet and it seems to be agoraphobia so like anxiety around leaving the house so at its mildest I had lots of experiences where I would like try to go to the cinema with my family and have panic attacks to the point where I would have to go home at the worst I found that I can't travel so when we went to holiday in France last year on the first night I nearly went home because my anxiety was so strong and then in about October or November I was supposed to be speaking at a conference up in Manchester and they had booked us into a hotel and I was there in Manchester for maybe three hours before having to come home because the anxiety was so overwhelming so that means that I can't go out overnight anywhere and going out locally just during the day I need to either have Mr Purple with me or I need to have Coco with me and have it be something that I know what's going to happen and isn't too stressful. Coco is my assistance dog if you are new to this channel so she comes and supports me or Mr Purple comes and supports me. Again it's not severe, I can go out but it's definitely something that's impacting my life and also I really really love traveling and the idea of traveling and I'd really like to go on holiday with my family or just even be able to go away overnight if I'm working and I can't do that at the moment and that feels 
really restrictive. I guess I feel a little bit trapped at home right now, which is fine because I love my house and I have this connection with the world through the internet that means I don't feel completely isolated, but I really would like to hope that that would improve because there are some places in the world that I would like to visit, Japan being a big one of those, that I'm not going to be able to do unless I can overcome this. And underlying all of these factors that were in play for me last year is just that I am autistic and I do have ADHD, so I don't cope as well with the emotions and the stress around those situations as I might otherwise do. So because of all this stuff going on, and it really did feel like there's a lot of other minor stuff, like I had a little accident in my car and scraped the side of my car and, you know, little things like that happened. And it just felt like for a large part of last year, it was just one thing after another after another, and I didn't have the resilience to be able to be calm or rational, and so I just feel like I spent a lot of the year freaking out, if I'm being honest, and that's really difficult within the context of being a mum and being a wife, because then I feel really guilty about the impact of my stuff, my agoraphobia, my health stuff, and then my freaking out on my family, and then I feel guilty, and that makes myself a drop and that makes it hard for me to believe in myself which makes it hard for me to do my job to do anything really because I'm just like sitting there thinking like I'm just a really difficult person and I wish I wasn't this way yeah so that's a lot of negativity and I don't really want to dwell on negativity too much because I am trying to move forward now so over the Christmas holidays I took a proper break I didn't make any content for a full week and like took some time to be with my family and relax and play board games and have fun and eat nice food and just take some take a break from the stress of life uh and that's given me some time to feel more rested and ready to come back and make content which is good and reflect on how things need to be different and I think one of the big things is that my word for 2023 is going to be forward and this is about one of the things that's really helped me recently is not thinking too far into the future and instead just coping and dealing with the day that I am in today. Like one day at a time. I don't need to think about next week or next month. I just need to think about what do I need to do today and take one step at a time on the path that I am currently on towards the life that I want to be living. And the life that I want to be living is one in which I am someone who is confident with, with good self-esteem and a lifestyle that suits my neurology and you know I'm gonna have bad days and I'm gonna have big emotions but I'm coping with them more rationally and without having to turn to unhealthy behaviors and then once I'm in that life that gives me the like the the freedom and the energy to achieve what I want to achieve for my career and to do the things that I want to do with my family the traveling that I'd like to do and just nice days out and concerts and things that I would like to be doing like living basically. So forward is the year for 2023. And I know that one of the things that I need to address is my work-life balance, because I'm working like all the time. I love my job. It's also a highly competitive job, being a content creator, uh, especially like now, since the pandemic and TikTok has brought in like loads of new creators, and that's fantastic. I, like the more people talking about autism and ADHD, the better as far as I'm concerned. But it means that it is like quite competitive. Any performing, any uh, creative industry tends to be quite competitive. And it can be hard to manage that when you're an insecure person. And so I tend to obsess and work too hard. And even when I'm not actually making content or uploading it, I'm scrolling social media, checking out the trends, finding sounds, thinking of ideas. Like I'll literally be sat watching TV nine o'clock at night and an idea for a video will come into my head and I have to write it down or I will forget it. So I'm constantly, almost constantly on really. And so I know I need to achieve a better work-life balance where I am working a set amount each day and then I am off in the evenings and at weekends because that will help me to manage my anxiety and my stress and my overwhelm. So I am gonna work really hard to make sure that I do that. I'm not entirely sure what that looks like yet. I haven't figured it out because there's stuff like I need to upload on YouTube and Instagram at like seven o'clock at night because that's when you need to upload. And I wanna be finishing work at four or five o'clock in the afternoon. And, and when I upload at seven o'clock at night, 
I get sucked in. So it's going to take some discipline, it's going to take some strategies. But one of the things I started this week that's been really helping is doing art when I've finished work. Like almost bridging that gap between the end of the working day and the evening is easier if I've got a specific activity that is not on my phone or on tech. So I'm going to try and do more art, I'm going to try and re read more books, I'm going to try and just like engage in calming activities to help me bridge that gap. Um, additionally, Mr. Purple is currently working on a little bit of a refurbishment of my hour bedroom so that I have a chill space with like sensory lights and stuff that I can go and use where like no one else in the family is when I need to regulate. I've also got some overhead earphones that I got a couple of months ago that I've got noise cancelling and I'm finding that if I put those on in the evening when I'm overloaded that's really helpful too. So I'm just like picking up strategies. I have increased my like journaling that I do each day so that I'm including like what went well today, what am I thankful for today, things like that into my daily practices to help with wellness. I am focusing on eating a healthy diet with you know things that are known for keeping brains calm like matcha tea for example so I'm just like I'm not in a it's January so I need to flagellate myself with lots of things that I'm doing wrong that I need to correct I'm not taking things away I'm like adding stuff into my life that will support the life that I want to live so yeah this feels like quite a jumbled video I don't often make unscripted videos on YouTube these days because I like need to make content to be completely honest that is going to do well and make money because that's how I pay my bills and often these kind of more like personal talk to camera unscripted not on a particular topic that is searchable videos don't tend to do as well but at the same time like I do sometimes want to just sit down and have a chat with you so I think maybe moving forwards I'm gonna balance out those scripted like definite topic videos with a little bit more casual stuff like so that we can connect and I might even get to some more live streams this year last year because I was so chaotic I did like one last Christmas and then one this Christmas I'd like to do a few more and maybe I'll do some also members live streams for the uh, purple people community who are members here or on YouTube or on pa Patreon to connect as a community um so yeah, if you'd like to join that community, I have a Discord group and you can join that Discord group by joining here on YouTube or joining on Patreon and uh, that's a great, friendly, lovely group. I have admin in there making sure that it's a safe and supportive space and in addition to that I also do a weekly update on Patreon and on my Discord group of just so like just being a little bit more involved in what's happening for me day to day so if you'd like to get in on that then do consider joining um and if you've enjoyed this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and i will be back next week thanks for watching goodbye <laughs>